Okay, guys. So now <clears throat> let's begin with this process. So on the last class, already we have seen few things. Just let us brush it up, and then we'll move further with the process as it is. Okay. So guys. You know, the Azure Databricks. Yes. Azure Databricks. So what is Azure Databricks? Azure Databricks is nothing but basically this is a service, guys. It is a service. It is a service. Azure Databricks is nothing but what? This is a service. Or in broad, we can say it's a cloud-based uh, cloud service. Am I right? It is a service or we can say this is a cloud-based service. It is a cloud-based service. Cloud-based service. And now this cloud-based service is used to perform. Uh, what is that? It is used for the process of data summarization. It is used for the purpose of uh, process of what data summarization, wherein guys, wherein everyone, so that this data summarization is done here. This data summarization is done in the ADF, that is uh, in the ADF or ADB, whatever we have it. So the data summarization is done in the ADB here by using what is that? By using a technique, by using the technique called ETL or, or ELT. ELT, yeah. yeah, or ELT. Basically, ETL is nothing but what? Extraction, transformation, and loading. And ELT is nothing but what? Extraction, loading, and transformation. Okay, I'm writing it here. Extraction. Transformation. And loading. Whereas the ELT stands for what? Extraction, Ex loading, transformation. Yes, extraction, loading, transformation. That should be. Now, whether you go with the extraction, transformation, or loading, or the extraction loading or transformation wherein the elt is a new technique guys elt is a new technique introduced okay it is a new technique okay elt extraction loading and transformation anyways we'll see the difference of between the etl and elt once we get into the subject now okay basically both requires two things what is that you require the source and then you require the target You require the source and you require the target. Two things. You require the source and you require the target base. Now, when we talk about the source, so source means what? The source is nothing but ultimately the source of data. So ultimately, what is it? Source is nothing but it is nothing but the source of data, guys. It is nothing but the source of data. source of data so guys when you talk about the source of data tell me now what are the sources we can have where we from where we get the data ultimately all these sources are being we can get this data from the business only whereas whereas we can get the data from the business either in the form of a files it can be the following type of file. What is that? It can be the CSV file. It can be the Excel file. It can be the text file. It can be the JSON file. Or else it can be the Avro file, etc. These are all the these are all the files we can have it. Apart from getting the data from the files, we can also expect the data from the business 
where it generates the data in the form of a database. Whereas this database can be again, what is that? Oracle SQL Server. Okay, Teradata, Informix. etc these are all the databases whereas apart from this we can also expect to the data guys we can also expect to the data from our very you know the source called what's it live streaming data live streaming data whereas the live streaming is nothing but we have the continuous process data that is data from the share market okay cricket match data Okay, constantly we the values will really keep on changing. That is called as live streaming data. Okay, so these are nothing but basically uh, the source or sources of data. Whereas this data, guys, this data is basically this data is basically classified, or we can say this data is nothing but it is called as a big data, guys. It is called as a big data. Big data means what? massive amount of data or a huge amount of data is called as a big data so we can say huge data huge information it is called as what huge information that is called as what massive amount of information is called as a big data okay both means the same here okay what is it it can be the yes guys it can be what's it big data or i'm just elaborating this one or else it is also called as what huge information that means massive amount of information this data is basically classified into three categories that means this data can be of three types what are those types yes guys what are the types data semi structured data and structured very good so the first one is what structured data the first one is what structured data The second one is we have it as a semi-structured data. And the third one is what we have it, un unstructured data. These are the three categories of data we have it. Whereas the structured data you know already, the data which is generated in the form of a table, the data which is generated in the form of a table is called as what? Structured data, okay? This data is generated in the form of a table. That is called as what? Structured data. Whereas when we call about uh, the semi-structured data, the data, okay, table tabular format means what? You have a table here, okay? I'm just giving it a table some name, ID, and salary. Whereas this is the data where you have a rows and columns are there. These are the rows. The columns are above A length. Some value here. And uh, 60, These are the rows, rows and columns, proper structured data. There are semi-structured data. The semi-structured data is nothing but basically this data, the data which we can find in the form of a HTML file, or else we can form it. Uh, we can find it in the form of a JSON file, okay, etc. Or else we can find it in the form of what XML file. This kind of data is called as what semi-structured data. It is called as what semi-structured data where this data is not fully structured but still it can understand by the user okay that is called as a semi-structure so just let us uh, put the data here in the form of a json so the data always uh, can see here in the json the data is always kept the data is always kept in the form of a uh, curly braces this is these are the curly braces and now in the form of a key value pair so what is the keys the keys are like this so I'm just saying the key is a name. 
key means what column name is called as a key here okay the column name is the key and now the key is alien then you have the next key what is the next key you have it id number id and the value for this id is sorry the value for this id is um, 45 and then you have a comma here the numeric data will be placed normally like this and the third is nothing but here you have it uh, that is 70000 is the salary and it is sal as a key always the keys are kept in the quotes guys always the keys are kept in the quotes and now you have 60000 sorry 70000 that's it now this is called as a key value pair it is called as what key value pair the data that means here it is not in the fully structured but still the user can understand this data that is called as what that is called as what unstructured the semi structured data whereas guys the next one you have what is that structure let us say unstructured data unstructured data means what there is no proper structure for this data there is no proper structure for this data basically that means all the photos in your mobile phone videos etc these are all the these are chat histories you have it okay voice notes all this comes under what is that unstructured data all this comes under the unstructured data whereas guys whereas whereas this data this data whatever we have it first of all we require to store it into the azure we require to get it into the azure but when we get the data into the azure the azure requires requires okay that is anywhere storages to store this kind of data so hence today we'll start with the storages in azure we start with the storages in azure so guys the storages in azure is 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 a common that means the storages in azure need to be that is nothing but we, we must and should have this storages in azure without the storages you cannot store and every storage has a capacity of storing the data what type of data it is such as i have the first storage here the first storage is the azure blob storage means what the azure blob storage azure blob storage is nothing but what the azure blob storage is nothing but binary large object what it is binary large object the blob stands for what binary large object whereas it can store any kind of a damn data you have it that is nothing but structured data it can store the semi-structured data and can also store the unstructured data so what is it we can have all type of data what is it structured semi structured and unstructured data so any kind of data guys any kind of data we can store it in a blob storage next one what is it you have it azure data lake gen 1 anyways this is another type of storage where generally this is not existing right now because this is going to retire in 2024 so the azure is recommending to migrate the data whatever the data we have it in azure data lake gen 1 migrate the data to the azure data lake gen 2 so for that they have also provided us with some advanced features that is called as what azure data lake gen 2 now here it is provided wherein the azure data lake gen 2 is very advanced storage here which can store again the all type of data we have it whatever it may be whether it is structured semi-structured and as well as the unstructured data we have it but apart from this guys 
you have what is that azure cosmos db it's a very trending database where cosmos db that is cosmos db we call it as where it is called as no sql database no sql database so now guys this can store guys everyone this can store this can store only what is that the structured and as well as the semi structured when we talk about the database guys everyone when we talk about the database so the database has capacity to store only the structured data generally but here when we talk about the cosmos db the cosmos db is nothing but basically it can store okay two type of data what is it it can store structured as well as the yes it can store the structure as well as the semi structured that's it two type of data where unstructured data we cannot store it here okay it can store the structured and the semi structured data next after this we have the storage called what azure sql database guys when you talk about this normal database where is this is one sql database this is not no sql it is sql so hence as it is a sql database it can store only one type of data that is called as what structured data not the semi structure nor the uh, unstructured likewise you have what's that azure synapse whereas azure synapse it can store again the azure synapse it can store all the data here structured semi structured and unstructured okay and then we have what is that azure elastic pool when we talk about the guys when we talk about the uh, elastic pool it is only the structured data we can have it where the pool is nothing but it is a collection of multiple data sources multiple data sources such as the databases we can store it likewise guys likewise here you have in azure altogether you have 90 plus storages are there how many 90 plus storages are available into this azure for storing the data now guys today we'll start with this process now now let us see how does the storage looks like and how does it works so basically to go ahead with this to go ahead with this guys to go ahead with this and uh, to start with the process guys let's uh, see first of all how does the storage look like so when we talk about the storages everyone when we talk about the storages can you see here when we talk about the storages okay so here we can uh, first of all to begin with the process you need to go to that uh, azure.com register yourself with the azure.com you have to take the subscription for the azure.com i will show you how to take the subscription and all okay you have to take it and finally it will reroute you to the portal called portal.azure.com this is the actual page from where you will be beginning it so now guys everyone so i'm just starting with this practical now I'm sharing the screen. Everyone is able to see the Google screen now? Yes. Yes. So now here, just type azure.com. Azure.com. There is no piracy, nothing like that. Directly you can register it and you can use it. That's it, guys. This is the azure.com. And now click on free account because initially you can start with a free account by just providing your debit card or credit card details and it will charge you only two rupees where where it will you it will provide you with 15,000 free credits till the 15,000 uh, credits are available you can use this after this what happens 15,000 credits are over then you will be converted the account will be converted from the free account to pay as you go model pay as you go model okay so now guys just to do one thing start for free now
now start for free now it will ask you for the mail id first you need to you require all of you all of you require to give the mail id so it says us already you looks like an azure account that means so here it says uh, uh you have already signed up so hence it is giving me this message else your mail id will come once you enter the mail id you will again uh, it will reroute you back can you see here reroute you back all the details when you enter the card details and all it will reroute you back to this one what is that this is called as a portal.azure.com this is the actual portal where you are going to work now can you see here this is my subscription and now you want to see the subscription here just click on this this is the subscription i have it <clears throat> this is the subscription i have it this is subscription and the cost amount currently it's 900 for me okay so guys this is the subscription we have it so just open this here you will have all billings related information okay the last bill is uh, something 9040 okay and uh, then you have the other thing cost analysis You can also design a budget that means you don't want to exceed it you can give a budget name and period and all these things you can design it anyways so i'll tell you how to save the cost and all okay so anyways this are, these are the things we have it so now just go back to this home page can you see here everybody you have services click on all services Now, can you see here, these are all the storages and services we have it. So, out of the services, we have the service called storage service. Under the storage service, you have all these 21 storages. Okay. But these storages are purely, these storages are purely database storages. Apart from this, can you see here, multiple services are there where some of them are storage plus various things you have it storage plus such as we have it here you can see some logic app connector is there okay iot central application is there azure center for sap solutions that means you can integrate with sap sir yeah please uh, i have a free account of azure i have subscribed mm -hmm. for free account so cost is showing four rupees so it means it is a uh, cutting from that fifteen thousand rupees which we have got for a one month yes okay. it's cutting it okay. so now then can you see here automatically these are all the services which is provided here okay and some of the services are storage services some of our, are for specific this thing likewise storage account it is storage service likewise if you count it or calculate it totally you will have 90 90 plus storages are there totally you have how many storages 90 plus storages are there 90 plus storages are there guys okay so these are the storages we have it that's it guys now all of you let us start with now now guys let us start today with the azure data bricks see may, make sure these storages you have these are common for all azure services one of the services what adf one of the services called what adb so we are that means one of the service called what synapse guys for all this even we have what is that artificial intelligence or else we have the machine learning this is these are what one of the services azure uh, machine learning azure artificial intelligence azure synapse azure adb azure databricks azure data factory all these are the services now we are going to learn what is an adb 
okay guys so now we'll start with the adb here so now let's start with the azure let's start with the azure guys everyone data bricks let's start with the azure data bricks now guys azure data bricks so azure data bricks everyone azure data bricks to use the azure data bricks first of all we require to know the properties hmm? we require to know the structure of the azure data bricks how does really it works so for understanding that guys i am giving you the following that is nothing but azure data bricks session azure data bricks session guys azure data bricks session requires the following properties requires the following properties here azure data bricks session properties that's it the first can you see here the first and foremost here is called as a guys everyone resource group hmm? the first and foremost is called as what resource group so now let us see what is a resource group first of all after the resource group you have the workspace then afterwards the workspace you have it here cluster then after the cluster you have a notebook these are the properties of a azure data bricks session these are all the properties of what azure data bricks session now guys now let us understand one of it each one of it and how does it works and what is the use of it okay guys everyone let us start with the resource group what is a resource group just come out of this now can you see here everyone i'm taking you to my desktop everyone is able to see the screen now yes sir now guys here can you see there is a folder there is a folder called emp open this this folder called emp guys this folder called emp has how many files right now tell me three files three files are there in this folder now the question is that if i delete this folder called emp will the files available or files will also be deleted will also be deleted that's it so we can say that the entire files whatever we have it it is dependent on the emp folder so can i say emp as a main folder yes hmm? yes so we can say that emp is a main folder under which all the files are available and once you delete it the entire files will also be deleted in the same way this kind of a folder we created in azure so hence this is called as what is that guys this is called as what a resource group resource group is nothing but whether you create a workspace cluster notebook all this you can consider as a file right now at this moment all this will be recorded in a resource group now if at all you wanted to delete it simply delete the resource group everything will go off that means whatever the properties you are creating that will be placed under a main folder that name is called as what resource group that is called as what a resource group so we can say that the resource group is like a main folder which stores the entire data or the entire okay that is something but properties of the data bricks once you delete it automatically everything will delete you need not delete all of them individually so we can say resource group is like a main folder 
clear everyone please yes guys yes sir yes yes so i want a reply from all of you guys so you are clear now these are the basic things yes sir. sir what is tenant sir i'll come to that okay so basically can you see here basically a resource group is nothing but it is a resource group is nothing but this is a main folder which holds it is like a main folder which holds the entire process which holds the entire process so now guys the next one you have what's that workspace what's that workspace now guys workspace so let us discuss what is this is a very important point guys we are coming here now what is a workspace basically okay basically now guys we all are connected now we all are connected now now we all are from same location or different locations guys please tell me different location different locations we all are from different locations sitting at a different place but which one is what is connecting all of us the internet internet okay internet is one next actually yes. to join this meeting internet is helping you to connect whereas actually to join if you have internet can you connect it link very good what is that the zoom link am i right the zoom link so i can say that one zoom link is connecting all of us one zoom link is connecting all of us to attend the session on the adb that is called as azure databricks so we can say that one link is given to all of us sitting at a different location sitting at a different okay we can say different countries or sitting at a different places or the cities okay whereas what we are doing is sim using a simple link we are able to connect and take up the classes take up the classes getting my point so we can say that so we can say that we all are different users we all are different person and we are connecting it using a link here so that means we can say that the workspace allows the workspace allows multiple users the workspace allows multiple users to get uh, that is in your connected and work into the single environment to work into the single environment that means within a single workspace guys within a single workspace we can okay accommodate a data engineer a data engineer can work a data scientist can work a data analyst can work all of them can sir all of them guys all of them can work into the single environment by using a workspace so workspace is nothing but technically what i can say is this is a collaborative environment it is a collaborative environment it is a collaborative environment where it allows multiple users to work into the single session to work into the single session so all of us from different locations all of us from different locations are getting connected and now we are learning this adb okay adb whereas we are learning this adb using a simple thing what is called as what that is nothing but the zoom link that is nothing but called a what zoom link using the zoom link we are able to connect it to the adb session and we are learning it in the same way workspace is just like your link a workspace is just like a zoom link which allows multiple users to work onto the same environment at a time same environment at a time yes guys all of you following please tell me now yes sir okay yes what about rest of you guys please tell me yeah okay yeah okay. Mm. now the next one you have it as what guys workspace so i'll just write a note for the workspace here
it allows multiple users to work collaboratively into a single session that's it okay that's it this is nothing but a workspace now guys when we talk about the cluster so basically what do you understand when i use the word called cluster guys tell me now yes a server exactly cluster is nothing but basically a server technically speaking it is server whereas now guys leave about this now let's take an example of our zoom link now guys you have a zoom link so at morning 7 30 a.m we all are getting connected at 7 30 a.m we all are getting connected using a zoom link and taking up the class for adb taking up the class for adb so we can say that the zoom link is allowing all of us all of us to work to join at a time by using this particular zoom link whereas suppose you wanted to learn this adf also so do you uh, adf also so what happens here one more link will be provided to this adf suppose you want to learn the synapse one more link is provided so now tell me how many links we have it we have three links right now so these three links these three links is controlled by whom who will be controlling this three durga links software. exactly oh. durga soft very good it is controlled by the durga soft we can say that durga soft is maintaining these three links am i right so we can say that here also the cluster is nothing but the cluster is like a that is nothing but admin the cluster is like what is that basically the cluster is like a main that is nothing but like a durga soft it maintains all the links in the same way the cluster here is nothing but it is the collection of so we can say like that uh, durga soft is maintaining the link so we can say the durga soft is the master of this link yes we can say the master of this link of course we can say and we all are what workers for the same so in the same way cluster is nothing but it is the collection of two machines what is that master machine master machine and next one is what worker machine master machine and worker machine master machine or worker machine in in technical way we can say master node or worker node master node or worker node node mean machines guys okay master node so master node is that who controls the cluster who controls the cluster is called as what master node worker node means what who controls or uh, basically who works on the orders of the master node so who works on the orders of the master node is what worker node such as for example there is a company wherein you have a team in a company and this team is working on the instructions of their what project manager the company works on the instructions of the project manager so we can say that project manager is the master and the workers the employees who's working under that manager is called as what they are called as what workers so we can say that all the workers we can have all the workers all the workers is maintained by a person called what project manager so we can say and project manager has every right project manager has every right to control them am i right or not what has to be done which work which employee has to do it all this job is basically controlled by the manager in the same way here we can say the master machine or the master node is nothing but the he is the master or the owner of this particular cluster who controls the cluster and it decides how many worker nodes that is how many worker machines are required to be 
require how many machines or workers we work you know, on a particular job. Okay, such as for example, guys, you just go to the internet center. You go to the internet center. Once you have been to the internet center, guys. Uh, nowadays, in it's um, most of the places we don't have the internet centers. But when we go to the internet center, what happens there? Once we go to the internet center, guys. Okay, once we go to the internet center, what happens there? Uh, you will have, once you go to the internet center, you will, uh, he will give you one computer to work. Whereas that computer which on which you are working, it is controlled and managed by a person there who is sitting. That means he has the passwords for all the computers. He controls all the computers because they are internally collect, connected. So we can say that the master computer is that which controls all the computers in the internet center. So rest of the computers are called as the worker machines and the main machine which is controlling is called as what? Master machine. Getting my point? So this is nothing but the cluster. So we can say that a cluster is the collection of master node and worker node together. So whereas cluster is nothing but basically it is called as what? Server. Cluster is nothing but what? Server. Cluster is nothing but what? Server guys. Okay. Cluster is nothing but what? Server. A server is nothing but what? We can have multiple users for a server. A server is a place, server is a place where the entire data is recorded here. In the same way, cluster is nothing but the glue group of machines working together and controlled by a main machine that is called as a master machine, is called as a cluster. And in the other example of, about the links, so all the links are controlled by one master link or one by the one master person that is nothing but the Durga song. So when that uh, when first link has to be started, when the second link has to be started, and when the third link has to be started, all these links are nothing but just like what is that? Are nothing but the worker nodes. Okay. Whereas the main these links is controlled by the person called what? Master, master node. That is nothing but what? The master machine, we can say. That's it. So this is nothing but the cluster. Clear everyone or not? Please tell me now. Yes, guys? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Next, after this. Guys, somebody is not yes, understanding. Please let me know so that I can repeat it once again. Comfortable, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, workspace, how it will work like this? Workspace means uh, it will be created and then a uh, lot of people, they will use it. Or, uh, exactly. Or one exactly. project, they will use it. Uh, yes, come? yes. Suppose there are two projects, so five projects are running. Okay, five pro for five projects, for five projects, workspace, five workspaces are created. Five workspaces are created. Getting my point? For five projects, five workspaces are created. Okay. Each workspace, okay. in each workspace, 100 members are working. So, totally, how many members are working there? 500 members in five uh, different workspaces. Am I right or not? Whereas, in this workspace, one person should be there who has to control all of them. Am I right or not? So, for that, we will be having the cluster that. And the cluster has, what is that? Every workspace will have a cluster where the cluster is the collection of the master machine and the worker machine. That means there will be a cluster. That means five projects. We five. That is nothing but here you have five projects. Uh, five projects people. That is around five hundred people are working into the uh, five workspaces. And these every workspace, every workspace will have a one cluster. Whereas this cluster is nothing but collection of what master machine and worker machine that is called as master node and worker node okay so that means every project will have a project manager so project manager will control that section so hence he is called as what master uh, machine whereas rest of all the people who is working under him are called as what worker machines getting my point and all of them are a part of what work one workspace all of them are the part of what one workspace Clear all of you? Yeah. Means for every workspace, we have to create a separate cluster, right? Exactly. Very good. Okay. We can have one or many clusters in one workspace. Okay. That's it. The next one is notebook. Notebook is nothing but, guys, this is a user interface book. 
notebook is nothing but what it is a user interface book it is called as a user interface book user interface book which is used to write user interface book which is used to write all the user defined commands using the language is called using the language is called what using the language is called what uh, python sql r okay python sql r uh, and we have what's the scala these are all the four languages we can use it here what is that python sql r and scala these are the four different languages we can use it here okay we can use the four different languages we can use what is that four different languages we can use it here okay guys these are the four different languages so in a notebook we can write the command in these four different languages so python r sql and scala using this we can write it all getting my point so we can write the commands here in four different languages in azure databricks okay in azure databricks and all these are kept all these are kept all these are placed all these are placed guys within a single notebook so we can write using a single notebook the user can write the commands in the four different languages four different languages that's it so this is the structure of the databricks guys one resource group is a main folder under which you can have multiple workspace okay and then a single workspace can have multiple clusters and one single cluster can have what's it multiple notebooks ultimately we write the code in the notebook only and once you write it on the code on the notebook it will process to the cluster for processing it further to the workspace and ultimately goes and store in the resource group that's it and if you delete resource group everything will delete getting my point now guys this is the structure and the, this is these are the properties of the azure databricks so this is how exactly the databricks will work now okay so everyone is clear with this yes sir yes, yes sir okay so guys so all of you just take the subscription uh, till tomorrow because tomorrow we are going to start with the practicals okay from tomorrow we are going to start the practicals how to start the brick session and all the things i'll show it to you tomorrow okay tomorrow we will have it okay this is the session just take the subscription all of you and we'll start the practicals from tomorrow tomorrow we'll start all this process what is it the workspace we'll see how to create the so resource group workspace cluster and notebook all this will create it tomorrow and then we'll work from tomorrow practically okay uh, sir please uh, this weekend also we have a lecture saturday sunday no no, no. only friday you will have it. tomorrow okay okay uh, sir and uh, uh, whatever uh, we do with the etl pipelines uh, with python and sql mm -hmm. Uh, these are the same things which will be done here, but in the cloud uh, uh, premise. Yes, but in the cloud environment. Okay, when we use Python and SQL, uh, it is uh, there. Informatica is used, tail end is used. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's it, guys, for the day. So thank you everyone for attending. And uh, tomorrow we will have it, the class at the same time. And uh, tomorrow the link will be changed. There will be a new link. So, and uh, you will receive this link on your email IDs. And uh, those who have not received it can just give me uh, your details. I will send you the link 8096374412. This is my number. You can WhatsApp me. 
and uh, during that at the time of whatsapping me just give your name and uh, batch timings so batch timing is adb 7:30 am b5 b5 is the code of the batch okay and uh, your email id is must to provide you the google drive access where all the you know uh, the material and all everything the videos will be given to you so the, in this format just send me your name email, batch timings and email id on this number on this number you can send me across i will revert you back with the things whatever we have it okay so i will create a whatsapp group as well so in the whatsapp group all the information related to the class and all those things we'll be sharing it on a daily basis okay and uh, that's it guys and uh, okay uh, so just okay uh, uh, you will have a new link from tomorrow so kindly uh, go ahead and uh, okay check accordingly you will receive the emails on your uh, email id guys so you can have it and those who have not received an email if you have any issues you can just message me i will get back to you on this okay that's it but tomorrow's uh, link will be changed na no? yes tomorrow there will be new link okay 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 guys thank you everyone i'm ending the class thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.